Bum 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 bum. Tomatoes. Hello, and welcome to the video for what is an actor component. This is an actor component. An actor component is a component or something that's self-contained that can go on an actor. And if you're using the engine, actors pretty much make up anything inside of our world. So in this case, I have this little blueprint here. It's my component actor test. And if we were to open it up, we'll see it's a stair. It's our big bad monster stair. And it's just a simple mesh. Well, this mesh is actually an actor component. It's a static mesh actor component. Our scene here is a scene component. And then this item right here is an attributes component. And this is what we're going to talk about. This is a custom created actor component. Now, if you go to the top left inside of your blueprint, like you want to add a component, you'll notice you have a list. And this list contains, well, a bunch of scene and actor components. And if we go to the custom section, you'll find custom components that I've created. One of them called attributes component. That's this one right here. And you can see here is basically what the attribute component is. Now, if we wanted to make one, we can right click in our content browser, blueprint class, and choose actor component. Or we can go inside the blueprint we want to add the component to, choose add component, and new blueprint script component. And from this list, we have things like actor component, scene component, camera component, directional light. You have others. We're just covering the actor component. But keep in mind, there are others that do other things, and there should be separate videos on those. After you've created your actor component, it basically comes in just like any other blueprint you might have worked with in the past. You have your event graph, where you can put things such as an event override for ticking, beginning and ending. You have functions you can create. In this case, I create a change health function. You have variables you can create, event dispatchers, local variables. You can do everything you can, for the most part, except there are less events to override, and some of those are input, and I'll cover that shortly. In this case, I wanted a component that I could add to things to give them attributes. Health, magic, strength, these are simple variables, and then a function called change health that takes in a value, adjusts the health that's stored here on this component, and then sets the new value. So you could think of this as the ability to give something stats or attributes if you want it to be an NPC or a player or something like that. Now inside of my blueprint component here, not blueprint component, my blueprint, I have added that attributes component. So we can actually go and delete that. Add component, we'll go down to custom, attributes component, and here it comes in. It's gonna come in like anything else you've added. Default values are all set to zero because I have no defaults here. So let's go ahead and adjust those. We'll do 100, 105, and then we'll run this. Now for my example, I'm getting that attributes component from this item. I'm displaying the health value. And every time you hit damage, it's calling the change health function with negative 10 and subtracting 10. And I can show you that here. I'm grabbing that item in their scene and storing it for later. And then I'm grabbing that item, asking the attributes component for its reference, grabbing the health value from the attributes component. Remember this variable right here. And then turning it into a text. When I click the button, again, I grab that blueprint in the world, grabbing its attributes component, which again, attributes component right here. This is the attributes component with its values. Calling the change health function, which is this function we created right here called change health. Once that's done, I'm grabbing those values again and displaying it. So it's really simple. There's no reason you couldn't do this on the character itself, but if you're not using inheritance, for example, a basic character, then under that, a player character or an enemy character, and you just want to be able to give stuff or have stuff happen selectively, then that's where components come in, and that's where the actor component comes in to allow you to create it. Now, I'm going to show you the issue that you may run into. Let's go ahead and let's open up our character actor component here. And this is just my little character that spawns into the world. It has no input. I have no input in here. I want to put the input on the actual component. Okay, so we have a component I created called jump component. And if you look at this, you're going to think, think, okay, this looks weird. And it does. If I was to, for example, type in jump, you're going to have a call event function jump event, call function stop event, 
which are these two that I created. But you might know some things are missing. If we were to actually go to our character and type in jump, you're going to have the event on jumped right here. Or if we type in jump again, you're going to find the action event under input. This is where our input manager sends the input over to our character or our controller and allows us to take input from our player, our real person, like our spacebar in this case, and do something with it. Input action events do not exist inside of actor components. You type in the input, you're not going to be able to take those events. You could take individual input. For example, you could see if individual keys are mapped, but unfortunately you can't actually have the input events fire. Also, you notice again in our function overrides here, we have tick, end play, and begin play. In our actual character itself, our actual actor, we have the ability to override many, many more events. Damage, destroyed. So you're missing a lot of these things because they don't have it as part of an actor component. Now, certain events you can call the parent. So for example, get owner. And then you could bind to events that come from the existing parent. Overlapping events, taking damage, end play, begin play, mouse clicking, things like that. And that's what we're going to take advantage of. So in order to pass input, for example, from your character that takes the input over to your component and have your component do something, you will bind using event dispatchers to call events. So in this case, this is a little advanced for this, but just to summarize it, you can look at the event dispatchers and binding and such videos. Whenever jump is called on the character, I'm calling the jump dispatcher event. Whenever I release it, I'm calling the dispatcher event for stopping jumping. So that way, it's just two little fire and forget dispatcher events and anything can bind to them. And inside of the actual component itself, I'm grabbing the owner, casting to my actor, and then binding to jump and stop jump and that means jump and stop jump so if i was to take my character here and we'll add in that custom component for jumping and we'll play this my character can jump he can stop me he can jump me. if i was to remove this component compile it and hit play my jump button no longer works because i have nothing handling that my component was handling it and the nice thing is you have the ability to replace components at runtime so for example add component well, let's just do add jump so i have the add character jump component which i could run for example at begin play so if we unhook this we'll hit play nothing happens when i jump we'll hook this back up we'll hit play now my character can jump because it can process jumping through this binding or for example i have another one called die which is a die component and if i do this one now my spacebar kills the character Still the same input, still the same event dispatchers that I'm calling, but my die component, if we were to look at it, simply binds the jump event to destroying the actor. So you could use this method to have different controller schemes based on what your character is doing. Maybe your character is walking around and you have a walking component. Then they enter a plane, so you destroy the walking component and swap it out with a flying component. Now you're controlling the plane, for example. Or it's a superhero and you need something different to handle when they're not on the ground. So once they leave the ground, you change it into like a hovering movement component. So that's a way you could use input in components because components themselves don't directly take input. And that's it. That is the basics of an actor component.